asking ChatGPT to give a story on Billy's future visions from Contact Report 691. Hello, I will be asking ChatGPT the questions. Hello, I am an artificial intelligence AI chatbot that uses natural language processing to create human-like conversational dialogue. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 1. The great misery and end of the overpopulation story will be that it will be recognized by the world elite that the maintenance of their might can only be guaranteed by the overpopulation being drastically reduced, whereby this reduction of the humanity in the future time threatens to be carried out in felonious wise by the mighty ones of the world if the growth of the mass of the overpopulation is not ended in the foreseeable time through a drastic worldwide stop to births and if a world encompassing birth control is not arranged. The mighty ones of the world, that is to say, the state authorities, the dominators of the peoples and mighty capitalists, which as such form the world's elite, who on the whole are also blinded by their strongly religious sectarian belief, and also will be in the future, will be much more malicious and worse in the kind and wise of their actions than the war and humanity felonies which happened through the Nazi horror. This future world-mighty elite will know no mercy and carry out a humanity elimination which could not be more horrible. And according to probability, Various possibilities for that show, such as that the diverse traditional death-bringing rapidly spreading diseases are adapted and prepared with deadly new active substances. However, also that artificially created illnesses for the decimation of the humanity will be used. In the same way, the calculations indicate that infectiously working poisonous biological substances will be used and their deadly effects presented as new and unhealable rampantly spreading diseases, whereby these poisonous substances then penetrate into the entire organism via the airways and the mouth as well as via the skin and mucous membranes, where through inevitably unstoppable mass deaths will come about also deliberately caused famines and wars. Poisonings of the food and of the water will belong to the arsenal of the decimation of human beings to the point of a governable minimum, which will occur worldwide, therefore not only in individual murderous and dictatorially led countries. Also, a thermonuclear war for the depopulation of the majority of the mass of the earth humanity must be taken into consideration in order to reduce it so much that it can again be governed, consequently from that also a murder of peoples, that is to say, murder of humanity, can come about on a scale as has never before happened. In the not-so-distant future, a dark and ominous cloud hung over the world, casting a shadow of fear and uncertainty. The story of this future began with a recognition by the global elite that the very maintenance of their power and dominion was inextricably linked to the reduction of overpopulation. The world had reached a tipping point where the sheer numbers of humanity threatened to overwhelm the planet's resources and stability. This global elite, comprised of state authorities, dominant political figures, and powerful capitalists, believed that drastic measures were the only solution to secure their might. Their vision was fueled by a deeply entrenched religious sectarian belief system, a conviction that led them down a path darker than any in history. In this future, the actions of these world-mighty elites would make even the horrors of the Nazi regime pale in comparison. They harbored no mercy and their plans for humanity's decimation were chilling in their scope and brutality. Various possibilities were considered, all with the same aim, reducing the human population to a manageable minimum. One strategy involved the adaptation and creation of deadly diseases, armed with new, lethal substances. These diseases would spread rapidly, causing mass deaths on an unprecedented scale. Poisonous biological agents were weaponized to infiltrate the human body through the airways, mouth, skin, 
and mucous membranes, ensuring an unstoppable wave of fatalities. Deliberately induced famines and wars became tools in the arsenal of population control. The elite orchestrated poisonings of food and water supplies, making even the most basic necessities of life a potential death sentence. This campaign of death was not confined to a single nation, but was a global endeavor. The unthinkable specter of a thermonuclear war loomed large as a means to reduce the global population to a manageable size. The sheer scale of this potential catastrophe was unprecedented, raising the horrifying prospect of a mass murder of peoples on a scale never before witnessed. The world watched in disbelief as these actions unfolded. Fear, despair, and hopelessness gripped the masses. It was a future where the very notion of human survival was at stake, where those in power had forsaken the most basic principles of humanity in their ruthless quest for control. In the face of such darkness, a small glimmer of hope remained, the possibility that some would resist. That pockets of humanity would unite to protect the innocent and strive to prevent the apocalyptic vision of the world's elite from becoming a reality. This dark future was a stark reminder that the consequences of unchecked power and fanaticism could lead to unimaginable horrors, and that the survival of humanity hung in the balance. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 2. Generally there exist already today in the entire world extremely complicated changes, and they will broaden in the coming time. And they will have state, political, capitalist, military, economic and citizen-based consequences called forth through the might behavior of the incapable ones who, through wrong decisions, mismanagement, might claims on other countries, suppression of freedom and of peace, give reason in many regards for uprisings and revolts in their own countries and so forth. In the not-so-distant future, the world was in the throes of profound and complex changes. These transformations were already well underway, and they were destined to become even more extensive in the years to come. They had far-reaching consequences across various facets of society, political, economic, military, and more, resulting from the actions of those who wielded power, despite their apparent incapability and a track record of questionable decisions. This future was marked by a series of interconnected challenges that had been set in motion by the mismanagement of those in authority. They were often responsible for making wrong decisions that led to a cascade of negative consequences, affecting not only their own nations, but also the global community. One of the key drivers of these changes was the expansion of state power. In a bid to maintain control, governments had become increasingly authoritarian, curbing personal freedoms, and suppressing the very essence of democracy. This oppressive behavior, driven by the quest for might, was met with growing discontent among citizens who yearned for freedom and peace. On the international stage, the world's nations were mired in conflicts and power struggles. Some nations, driven by territorial ambitions and might claims on other countries, ignited tensions that threatened global stability. As a result, the world found itself on the brink of diplomatic crises and even the outbreak of armed conflicts, casting a dark shadow over the prospects for peace. The economic landscape was equally turbulent. The actions of powerful capitalists, often motivated by greed and the pursuit of ever-increasing wealth, had led to economic inequalities of unprecedented proportions. The rich had grown richer, while the majority of citizens struggled to make ends meet. This economic disparity fueled social unrest and the desire for a more equitable distribution of wealth. In this future, the military-industrial complex had also played a significant role. 
Militarization was on the rise, with powerful nations flexing their military muscles and engaging in proxy conflicts across the globe. The global arms race had reached new heights, and the world teetered on the edge of potential confrontations. Despite the challenges and uncertainties of this future, there was a ray of hope. The very changes that had been set in motion by the incapable ones had also served as a catalyst for a groundswell of grassroots movements and citizen-based uprisings. People from all walks of life, united by a common desire for a better world, had taken to the streets in peaceful protest. Their demands were clear, accountability, transparency, freedom, and peace. The future was uncertain. But it was a reminder that in the face of adversity, the human spirit had an indomitable will to seek justice, to stand up against oppression, and to strive for a brighter future. As the complex changes continued to unfold, the world watched with bated breath, hoping that the collective actions of the citizens would shape a more just, peaceful, and equitable world for generations to come. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 3. The small and large countries in the whole world will equip themselves militaristically with the most modern weapons to a degree never known before whereby instead of peace, freedom and security, the entire thing will generally increasingly become a danger of quarrels with neighbouring countries and armed conflicts and wars. In the near future, the world stood at a precipice, gripped by an ominous and unprecedented arms race. Countries, both small and large, were feverishly equipping themselves with the most advanced and powerful weaponry the world had ever seen. It was a time of unparalleled militarization, a grim era where nations prioritized their military might over diplomacy, peace, and the security of their citizens. The relentless quest for military dominance had triggered a global frenzy, with each nation striving to outdo the other in the development and acquisition of cutting-edge weapons. The world watched in awe as arsenals swelled with weapons and technology that surpassed anything in history, from autonomous drones to artificial intelligence-driven warfare systems. While the stated aim of this militarization was often to ensure national security and protect the interests of the people, the reality was far bleaker. Instead of fostering peace, freedom, and a sense of security, the global arms race had sown the seeds of danger and discord. Tensions simmered between neighboring countries, and the potential for conflict loomed ominously on the horizon. The world had become a powder keg of international rivalries, with disputes over resources, territory, and influence escalating to dangerous levels. Diplomatic channels, once the preferred means of resolving differences, seemed overshadowed by the thundering drums of war. Nations increasingly regarded military strength as the primary tool for achieving their goals, leaving little room for as the international community held its collective breath, headlines were dominated by territorial disputes, aggressive posturing, and the specter of armed conflicts and wars. The global population, living under the constant shadow of uncertainty, longed for a return to a world where peace and diplomacy prevailed. Yet, even in the midst of this turbulent future, there remained a glimmer of hope. Civil society, recognizing the perilous path humanity was on, banded together in a fervent pursuit of peace. Grassroots movements, peace activists, and advocates for disarmament tirelessly worked to draw attention to the dangers of the escalating arms race. In the face of this global crisis, a new breed of peacemakers emerged, individuals and organizations committed to promoting dialogue, cooperation, and disarmament. They rallied for a return to a world where nations focused on improving the lives of their citizens rather than the destructive power of their arsenals. 
The future hung in the balance, teetering between the brink of war and the possibility of a renewed commitment to peace. As the world grappled with its precarious circumstances, the actions of those who championed peace served as a reminder that, even in the darkest of times, the human spirit's yearning for a world without conflict and war remained unwavering. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 4. Generally in the entire world. Increasingly serious attacks on the police organs from anarchistic groups of the population will occur and also claim human lives, along with the arising of the destruction of state property, which eventually might also lead to militaristic engagements against the corresponding groups when the security organs no longer have them under control. In the not-so-distant future, the world found itself in the throes of a growing and concerning social upheaval. Across nations and continents, anarchy and chaos were on the rise as anarchistic groups of the population carried out increasingly severe and coordinated attacks on police organizations. These attacks went far beyond the realm of peaceful protests and civil disobedience, threatening the very fabric of society and leading to tragic loss of human lives. The motives of these anarchistic groups were diverse, driven by a potent blend of grievances, discontent, and a perceived need for radical change. Their actions ranged from rioting and vandalism to outright violence against law enforcement agencies, all under the banner of challenging the established order and demanding a new world order. State property bore the brunt of this assault. Government buildings, public infrastructure, and symbols of authority were vandalized and destroyed, leaving cities scarred and in disarray. The damage was not limited to physical structures, the very foundations of the social contract, which depended on a functioning law enforcement apparatus, were shaken to their core. As these attacks continued to escalate, the security organs tasked with maintaining order found themselves increasingly overwhelmed. The anarchistic groups operated with an unprecedented level of organization and coordination, often making them elusive targets for law enforcement. This dire situation raised concerns that if left unchecked, it could lead to a state of perpetual turmoil and insecurity. Faced with mounting challenges, some governments contemplated a militaristic response to regain control. Deploying military forces to quell the unrest became a contentious and troubling possibility. It was a stark reminder of the fine line between maintaining order and infringing on civil liberties, and the world watched with bated breath to see how governments would navigate this precarious terrain. In the midst of this turmoil, civil society struggled to find a path forward. Calls for dialogue, understanding, and social change grew louder, and many sought peaceful resolutions to the underlying issues that fueled the chaos. Grassroots movements, activists, and community leaders worked tirelessly to address the root causes of discontent and to bridge the divisions that had torn societies apart. The future remained uncertain, a volatile mixture of unrest and the search for solutions. The clashes between anarchistic groups and law enforcement agencies underscored the fragility of social contracts and the importance of addressing underlying issues that had given rise to this turmoil. The world hoped for a future where peaceful dialogue, understanding, and meaningful change would prevail over violence and destruction, offering a glimmer of hope in a time of darkness. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 5. Along with the USA and Russia, China now also raises itself into the position of world politics, and now, since the Korean War, leaves the purely observing, passive and watching position, which until now was its traditional position, and changes into a self-confident, great and world might, 
and to the again blossoming new Chinese nation with an impressively growing economy, whereby, on the world political stage, the Socialist People's Republic of China no longer makes a secret of its ambitions as leading might and great might and so forth, and in every regard will, to a great extent, militaristically heavily arm itself. In the not-so-distant future, a significant shift was underway in the world's political landscape. Alongside the long-standing superpowers, the United States and Russia, China was rapidly ascending to a position of global prominence. For decades, China had adhered to a traditionally passive and watchful stance, often seen as an observer rather than an active participant in world politics. However, a series of transformative events, beginning with the Korean War, had led to a sea change in China's foreign policy and national identity. The nation once known for its traditional isolationism had awakened to a newfound self-confidence and assertiveness. The world witnessed the emergence of a resurgent China, poised to become a major force in international affairs. Central to this transformation was China's remarkable economic growth. With an economy that was expanding at an unprecedented rate, China had positioned itself as a global economic powerhouse. Its influence was felt not only in Asia, but also across the world as it became a key player in trade, investment, and development projects. China's political ambitions were no longer hidden behind a veil of secrecy. The Socialist People's Republic of China openly declared its intent to become a leading global power and a great nation on the world stage. This declaration sent shockwaves through the international community, reshaping the dynamics of global politics and diplomacy. Militarization was a key component of this new Chinese strategy. The nation heavily armed itself, investing in modern military technology, expanding its military capabilities, and establishing itself as a formidable presence in both conventional and cyber warfare. This military buildup raised concerns in other nations, leading to geopolitical tensions and strategic rivalries. As China's influence grew, so did its role in addressing global challenges, from climate change and humanitarian crises to security issues. The world watched with anticipation and apprehension as China navigated the complexities of global leadership, wielding its might and resources to make an impact on the world's most pressing issues. This future was one of shifting alliances, power struggles, and geopolitical maneuvering, as the world adjusted to the evolving dynamics of a multipolar world. Nations sought to balance their interests and navigate the delicate dance of diplomacy in the face of a resurgent China. The future held both the promise of collaboration and the risks of competition. Highlighting the complexities of a world where new powers were on the rise, challenging the traditional order and shaping the future of global politics. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 6. Everything concerning refugees will continue to increasingly climb in the future. We're through finally on the earth, 250 to 350 million human beings will leave their homelands as refugees and spread themselves throughout the world. Regarding this especially, Europe will bring forward the whole thing as a consequence of the mismanagement through the low intelligence of false humanitarian governors and groups of the population where through new afflictions and illnesses are called forth and will spread confusion, whereby also the hostility towards foreigners will increase, as will the race hatred, religious hatred and sect hatred, the criminality and the felony. In the coming years, the issue of refugees would continue to escalate, reaching unprecedented levels that would shape the future of our world. It was a global challenge with far-reaching consequences. As an estimated 250 to 350 million people, 
desperate and dispossessed, would be compelled to leave their homelands in search of safety and stability. Europe, in particular, found itself at the epicenter of this crisis, a result of a complex interplay of factors. Mismanagement, fueled by short-sighted and misguided decisions from leaders with questionable intelligence and false humanitarian ideals, had exacerbated the situation. These decisions had led to a chain reaction of misfortunes, cascading into new afflictions and illnesses, and creating a sense of chaos. The refugee influx strained European nations, their resources, and their societal fabric. As the numbers of displaced people grew, the continent struggled to provide adequate shelter, health care, and employment opportunities for those in need. The resultant societal stress gave rise to an undercurrent of hostility towards foreigners, fueled by fear and uncertainty. Tragically, the world witnessed a resurgence in various forms of discrimination, driven by the increasing number of refugees. Race hatred, religious animosity, and sect-based prejudices grew as tensions flared between different communities. These prejudices and divisions manifested in divisive rhetoric, discrimination, and even violence, fracturing societies that were already grappling with the refugee crisis. Moreover, the strain on resources and opportunities led to a spike in criminality and felonious activities. Desperation and limited access to legal employment pushed some refugees into the shadows of criminal networks exacerbating security concerns in many areas. Criminal enterprises flourished as vulnerable populations became easy targets for exploitation. This future presented a stark contrast to the ideals of a compassionate and inclusive world. It was a sobering reminder that the challenges posed by mass migration and displacement were not isolated to one region, but had global ramifications. As millions sought refuge and a better life, the world faced a moral and practical crisis. With the potential to test the limits of humanity's ability to respond to the needs of the displaced and to address the root causes of these monumental challenges. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 7. The coming times bring many technological developments which will however evoke both benefit for the humanity as well as disadvantage and harm. Nature and its fauna and flora, that is to say, the entire ecosystem and the climate will be increasingly destroyed through the felonious machinations and outgoing effects of the overpopulation which are getting very badly out of the control of the good human nature, and indeed as a consequence of the rationality-less approval given for it by the governments in regard to the environment-destroying machinations. So for that also the state-mighty ones, governors and politicians are responsible, often also the military as well as the lobbyists, privately acting persons, populists and all other ones who take actions, who with their growing might and their filthy fingers reach into the governments and play their part in continuously destroying nature, its fauna and flora and the climate. Altogether additionally, broken down everywhere will be the inhibition level, which could still prevent much gavolt, which comes forth in increasing form through Ausa Tungan, unconcernedness, hate, unpeace and envy, and so forth as the malicious consequence out of the growing overpopulation, as also out of their machinations, evil fights over resources arise between the countries and will lead to war and armed conflicts. The rapidly increasing technical development as the phenomenon of the progressive time in the 21st century will be underestimated in its negativity because it will bring great dangers with it, through which ultimately the future of the entire humanity, and thereby also that of the future generations, will be put at risk. In the foreseeable future, the world was on the cusp of a technological revolution that would usher in unprecedented benefits, 
but also considerable drawbacks and harm. These advancements, while holding immense promise for humanity, came with a complex set of challenges. The consequences of unchecked overpopulation had begun to spiral out of control, jeopardizing the delicate balance of nature. Ecosystems and the climate were increasingly under siege from the felonious actions and effects of overpopulation. The responsible parties extended beyond individual actions, governments, in their short-sighted approval of environmentally destructive practices, bore a significant portion of the blame. The mighty figures of the state, governors, and politicians shared responsibility for the devastation of nature and the climate. The military, lobbyists, private individuals, and populists also played their part in undermining the environment. With their growing influence and unchecked power, they influenced government policies to continue harmful practices, leading to the ongoing degradation of the natural world. Compounding these issues was a breakdown in the societal restraint that could have otherwise curbed much of the violence that arose as a malicious consequence of overpopulation. With increasing social deviance, indifference, hate, unrest, and envy, the world found itself in a precarious position. Fights over dwindling resources between nations escalated, and the specter of war and armed conflicts loomed. Amidst all these challenges, the rapid pace of technological development was both a blessing and a curse. While it offered tremendous potential for improving the quality of life and solving pressing global issues, it also carried great dangers. The world, underestimating the negative impact of unchecked technological advancement, faced potential threats that could jeopardize the very future of humanity and the generations to come. It was a future marked by a fragile balance, where the choices made today would determine whether humanity could harness the positive potential of technology while mitigating the harm it could unleash. The world stood at a crossroads. With a need for conscious decision-making and responsible governance to navigate the challenges of the 21st century and safeguard the well-being of the planet and its inhabitants. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 8. Worldwide Again and again, new countries will fall into turmoil because in them, citizen-based and separatist-formed rioting will arise which will lead to serious domestic, political, and economic insurgencies, excesses, as well as to gay vault and confusion. In the near future, the world was plagued by a recurring and troubling trend. New countries were being plunged into turmoil, their stability shaken by the emergence of citizen-based and separatist-led uprisings. These movements weren't isolated incidents they were becoming a global phenomenon, causing severe disruption on multiple fronts. The root causes of these disturbances were diverse and complex. Citizens within these nations were no longer content to accept the status quo. Frustrated by economic disparities, political corruption, and lack of representation, they turned to protest and insurgency as a means of expressing their discontent. These citizen-led movements rapidly escalated into full-blown crises, with political and economic implications. The uprisings often led to political turmoil as governments struggled to contain the unrest and find effective solutions. The resulting power struggles and instability within these nations frequently had far-reaching consequences, creating fertile ground for the rise of extremist factions. Economic insurgencies were also a significant factor in this bleak future. As citizen movements gained momentum, disruptions to the economy became inevitable. Businesses shuttered, investments dried up and unemployment rates soared, causing widespread financial distress and exacerbating the cycle of instability. 
Amid this chaos, excesses, and violence became all too common. Gewalt, or forceful actions, often characterized these uprisings. It wasn't just peaceful protests, the movements frequently escalated into violent confrontations, leaving communities torn apart and causing significant loss of life and property. The global community grappled with the consequences of these recurring crises. Nations found themselves in a constant state of upheaval, and regional and international organizations struggled to find effective responses to the growing number of conflicts. It was a future marked by uncertainty, where social and political upheaval seemed to be the new norm. While the initial catalysts behind these uprisings were varied, they all pointed to a global wave of discontent and a growing desire for change. The world hoped for a future where dialogue, diplomacy, and meaningful reform could address the root causes of these recurring crises, fostering stability, peace, and prosperity for the nations affected. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? Nine. As it has been since time immemorial, it will also be in the coming time that the God-believers fight. Hate and make enemies of each other, and indeed not only the believers of diverse religions, rather also of the sex, where through also in this wise, again and again, belief-based quarrels and terrorism flame up, and malicious unpeace, hate, as well as wars, massacres, and forced displacements, Suffering, affliction, and misery will come over the humanity. And that will happen and will repeat itself as long as religions and the sects which result from them exist, and also new ones will form. In the future, the ancient cycle of religious conflicts and divisions persisted, reflecting a timeless aspect of human history. It was a world where believers of various gods, religions, and sex continued to engage in strife, hatred, and animosity toward one another. This discord wasn't confined to just interreligious conflicts, but extended to the divisions within religions themselves. Within these religions and sex, belief-based quarrels and acts of terrorism erupted repeatedly, setting the stage for a cycle of malicious unrest, hatred, wars, massacres, forced displacements, and untold human suffering. It was a grim reminder that the specter of religiously motivated violence was an enduring challenge, persisting through the ages. This future was a testament to the deeply ingrained nature of religious conflicts. As long as religions and the sects stemming from them continued to exist, the potential for strife remained and new divisions and sects could always emerge, further fueling the flames of discord. The world watched with a heavy heart, torn between the hope for religious harmony and the bitter reality of ongoing conflict. The future served as a stark reminder that the quest for peace and tolerance was a continuous journey, one that required a sustained effort to overcome the age-old animosities that had marred human history for centuries. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 10. The Governors The mighty ones of the state and the politicians, of whom a great part already works in a populist form, whereby also lobbyists play a part. However, fall into increasingly diverse forms of populism and come to might with populistic inciting, deceitful promises and with lies. They lead the populations into confusion and, through wrong leadership, into affliction, difficulties and doubt, as well as into unregulated states that are destroying the right conditions and a state endangering, whereby in Europe, along with Switzerland, in which unfortunately, also diverse populists and lobbyists can perform their mischief, to the detriment of the rights and freedom of the citizens, also Germany and naturally the EU dictatorship, as well as especially France, England and Holland and also Austria, because of the populists and lobbyists in the governments and amongst politicians, 
The population has its rights curtailed, is disadvantaged and exploited through new charges and taxes and so forth, and will also be in the future. In the not-so-distant future, a troubling trend was unfolding in the realm of politics and governance. Leaders, governors, and politicians, many of whom had already adopted populist tactics, were increasingly turning to populism as a means to gain and maintain power. Populist rhetoric, inciting fervor, and the propagation of deceitful promises and outright lies had become the standard tools of the trade. Under the sway of these populist leaders, populations found themselves thrust into confusion and disarray. Their misguided leadership resulted in affliction, economic difficulties, and a growing sense of doubt among the citizens. The result was a society marked by uncertainty and a lack of clear direction, as the very foundations of governance and leadership eroded. The impact of these populist leaders extended to the erosion of the rule of law and the undermining of essential institutions. The right conditions for a just and stable society were increasingly compromised, creating a state of disarray and endangering the foundations of the state itself. Europe, along with Switzerland, found itself at the epicenter of this political and societal shift. Here, various populist leaders and lobbyists exerted their influence, often to the detriment of the rights and freedoms of the citizens. In Germany, the European Union, France, England, Holland, and Austria, the presence of populist and lobbyist-driven agendas within the government and political spheres had tangible consequences. The consequences were felt by the population. Their rights were curtailed, their interests disadvantaged, and their financial burdens increased through new charges and taxes. It was a future where the very ideals of democracy and representation were in jeopardy, where leaders who exploited populist tactics posed a direct threat to the rights and well-being of the citizens. The world watched with growing concern as the influence of populism continued to shape the course of governance. It was a stark reminder that the choices made by leaders and the methods they employed had far-reaching consequences, and that the fight for transparent, ethical, and responsible governance would be an ongoing battle in the years to come. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 11. The public media of all kinds also will increasingly become a populist factor of might, through whose machinations and sense the populations are influenced and steered in a media populist form, whereby through the media and its might, false information which serves them is spread and the population is led into delusion. In the not-so-distant future, the role of the media had taken on a troubling and transformative character. Media in all its forms, television, radio, newspapers, and the digital realm, had become a powerful populist tool of influence and control. The media landscape was dominated by populism, with influential figures and organizations manipulating information to suit their agendas. These media populist forces held a great deal of sway over the population, effectively shaping perceptions beliefs, and even reality itself. The consequences of this media manipulation were profound. False information, often serving the interests of these populist media forces, was disseminated widely, causing widespread confusion and delusion among the population. It was a world where truth had become increasingly elusive, overshadowed by sensationalism and partisan narratives. The media, once considered a guardian of democracy and a source of reliable information, was now a tool that could be weaponized to serve the interests of powerful individuals, groups, and organizations. The line between responsible journalism and propaganda had blurred, making it increasingly difficult for the population to discern fact from fiction. 
In this future, the concept of a free press and unbiased reporting was under siege, as the media populist forces exerted their might. The very foundations of information and communication were in jeopardy, and the need for responsible and ethical journalism had never been more urgent. The world watched with growing concern as the media landscape continued to evolve, reshaping the way information was disseminated and perceived. It was a future where the battle for truth and transparency in the media was a central challenge, a reminder that the integrity of information was a cornerstone of a just and informed society. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 12. Populistically created and steered. Conspiracy theories and mendacious reporting will increasingly come about and will lead the populace of all countries into confusion and make them believers of all those who, by exploiting the people, attain horrendous profits from the whole of the conspiracy lies and at the same time control the population. In the not-so-distant future, the world was grappling with a troubling and pervasive phenomenon, populist-driven conspiracy theories and mendacious reporting. These manipulative narratives, cleverly created and orchestrated by those seeking personal gain, were gaining a stronghold in the public consciousness. The consequences were far-reaching, as the populace of various countries found themselves drawn into a web of confusion, uncertainty, and misplaced belief. These populist-driven conspiracy theories were constructed with remarkable precision, often targeting the fears, anxieties, and frustrations of the population. They exploited these vulnerabilities to gain a following, effectively persuading people to believe in the most outlandish and baseless claims. These narratives provided a false sense of certainty and explanations for complex problems, making them all the more alluring. For those who propagated these conspiracy lies, the rewards were enormous. They achieved staggering profits from the dissemination of falsehoods, preying upon the trust of the people. These manipulators not only lined their pockets, but also wielded immense influence and control over the very population they deceived. The consequences of this phenomenon were profound. Public discourse was poisoned, and the lines between fact and fiction blurred. Trust in traditional sources of information eroded, and society became increasingly polarized as individuals clung to their beliefs, regardless of evidence to the contrary. The world watched with growing concern as mendacious reporting and conspiracy theories gained momentum. The struggle to combat the spread of falsehoods became an urgent challenge for responsible journalism, fact-checking organizations, and individuals committed to truth and transparency. This future was a stark reminder that the battle for accurate information and critical thinking was essential for the well-being of society. It underscored the importance of nurturing a discerning public capable of distinguishing between credible sources and manipulative narratives, in order to ensure a more informed and resilient world. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 13. The political risks increasingly dramatically climb. As also in regard to the humanitarian matters, the economic problems, the entire national economy and corporations, whereby also great dangers exist through wars and the international terrorism risk, and thereby also security risks, play great roles. In the not-so-distant future, the world found itself on the precipice of mounting political risks and multifaceted challenges. These risks were of a magnitude that had seldom been witnessed in modern history. Affecting not only the political landscape, but also humanitarian concerns, economic stability, national economies, and multinational corporations. Political instability had reached alarming levels, casting a long shadow over nations and their leaders. 
The challenges extended well beyond traditional geopolitical tensions and conflicts, encompassing a range of humanitarian crises that were exacerbated by political decisions and indecision. The global economy, once seen as a pillar of stability, had become increasingly precarious. Economic problems and financial crises loomed, driven by factors such as wealth inequality, the devaluation of currencies, and international trade disputes. These challenges threatened to upend the well-being of citizens and their financial security. In this future, the international stage was marked by great dangers, notably the risk of wars and terrorism. The world faced the prospect of both regional and global conflicts, which had the potential to reshape political alliances and disrupt the international order. At the same time, international terrorism remained a significant concern, with extremist groups using both conventional and unconventional tactics to spread fear and chaos. Security risks were of paramount importance. Governments and organizations found themselves tasked with addressing a complex web of security threats, from cyber attacks and espionage to the risk of nuclear proliferation. The safeguarding of national and global security was a constant and pressing challenge. It was a future marked by uncertainty, where the shifting dynamics of power and the looming threats to stability required astute leadership and effective global cooperation. The world watched with bated breath. Recognizing that addressing these multifaceted challenges was not just a matter of national interest, but a collective responsibility for the well-being and security of all. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 14. Today's and the further coming world situation has become so dangerous that it is already in many a wise more dangerous than at the time when the Cold War still prevailed, and from now on will broaden out more. In the unfolding future, the world had reached a juncture of unprecedented peril. The global situation had grown so precarious that it rivaled, and in many ways exceeded, the dangers of the Cold War era. It was a sobering realization that the world had entered a new era of complex challenges and geopolitical uncertainties. The echoes of the Cold War, once thought to be a bygone era, had resurfaced in the form of renewed tensions between major global powers. Political rivalries, nuclear proliferation, and strategic military posturing had returned, reshaping the dynamics of international relations. This new era was marked by a convergence of threats, including emerging technologies that were both empowering and destabilizing. The world had grown more interconnected, and the consequences of global actions were felt more profoundly. Cybersecurity had become a frontline concern, with the potential for digital warfare and information manipulation presenting significant risks. The challenges were multifaceted, ranging from territorial disputes and proxy conflicts to environmental crises and public health emergencies. The world watched as the fragile balance of global politics and diplomacy was put to the test. The situation was dynamic and ever-evolving, presenting leaders and decision-makers with complex and daunting choices. In this future, the urgency of international cooperation had never been greater. The need for effective diplomacy, responsible leadership, and collaborative efforts to address the pressing challenges of the time was evident. The world's shared fate hinged on the ability of nations to come together in the face of adversity and forge a path toward a more stable and secure future. The future was marked by both uncertainty and hope as the world grappled with the formidable challenges before it. It was a time when the lessons of history served as a reminder of the perils of global discord.
and the imperative of working together to build a more peaceful and prosperous world was never more apparent. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 15. In the absolute foreground of all coming evil. Negative and bad changes through interference in foreign countries' internal and external affairs. Happenings, modes of action, conflicts, problems and so forth. Is the USA with its pathological craving for world domination, which, obsessed with might, as it has been since its beginning, increasingly interferes in the interests of other states and their domestic and foreign political affairs, concerns and interests and thereby provokes disturbance, unpeace, wars and other armed engagements. In the not-so-distant future, the world was witnessing a shifting global landscape, with the United States at the forefront of significant changes. The United States driven by a perceived path to world domination, was increasingly entangled in international affairs, both internal and external, becoming a central player in shaping the fate of nations. This path was marked by a relentless desire for power and control, a legacy that stretched back to its very beginning. The United States, driven by a fervent belief in its exceptionalism, was driven to assert its influence on the world stage. In doing so, it often intervened in the internal and external affairs of other nations, irrespective of the consequences. The impact of this interventionist stance was profound. It led to heightened tensions and conflicts, as other states bristled at the intrusion into their domestic and foreign political affairs, their interests, and their sovereignty. The United States' actions often provoked disturbance and unpeace, igniting wars and other armed engagements. The world was at a crossroads, with global stability and peace hanging in the balance. The international community grappled with the consequences of a powerful nation's insatiable appetite for influence and the need for responsible and balanced global leadership was never more apparent. It was a future that served as a stark reminder of the complexities of international relations, diplomacy, and the weighty responsibility of great powers. The world watched with both hope and apprehension, as it awaited a future where nations would need to find common ground and collective solutions to the global challenges that lay ahead. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 16. Positive Confederations Connections, agreements and contracts between diverse countries and organizations, and so forth, set up and having come about as a result of considerable effort, will partly or totally disband and fall apart, whereby often the USA will be the driving power for that and there through again and again stir up new enmities between countries as well as great insecurity, disturbance, unpeace, revolutions, and the danger of war. In the unfolding future, the carefully constructed fabric of positive confederations, connections, agreements, and contracts between diverse countries and organizations faced a growing and unsettling threat. The very alliances and partnerships that had been established through considerable effort, often to foster peace and cooperation, were beginning to unravel. This disintegration was not a result of happenstance, but often driven by external forces, with the United States playing a prominent role in the process. The motivations behind this move were complex, driven by changing political dynamics and a renewed focus on unilateralism. As these alliances weakened or dissolved, the world watched with trepidation. The consequences were profound, leading to a resurgence of old enmities between nations and the creation of new sources of tension. Insecurity, instability, and unrest began to spread raising the specter of revolution and the looming threat of armed conflict. 
The delicate balance of international relations and global stability was put to the test as nations were forced to reconsider their diplomatic and strategic positions. The world found itself at a crossroads, grappling with the implications of fractured international partnerships. The future was a reminder of the importance of collaboration and multilateral agreements in maintaining global stability and peace. It underscored the fragility of international relations and the need for nations to navigate the complexities of an evolving world order with wisdom, responsibility, and a commitment to the common good. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 17. In the future, the USA and the US governors will be exposed to very frequent threats which will come from both state and non-state acting persons who are hostile towards the government and state, as well as from great parts of the U.S. population, whereby the U.S. population will split into different population groups for which the basic factors have already been created, and consequently the U.S. population already in the current time separates into different groups. In the foreseeable future, the United States and its government faced a rising tide of threats and challenges. These threats originated from both state and non-state actors, many of whom held hostile intentions towards the government and the nation as a whole. The threats were multifaceted, encompassing a spectrum of concerns, from cybersecurity vulnerabilities to acts of domestic and international terrorism. The United States, a nation historically characterized by its diverse and often unified population, found itself grappling with an increasing division among its citizens. These divisions had been exacerbated by a range of factors, including political polarization, socioeconomic disparities, and cultural differences. As a result, the U.S. population had begun to splinter into different groups, each with its own set of beliefs, interests, and concerns. These divisions had given rise to a climate of heightened tension and mistrust within the nation. In this future, the government and its leaders were tasked with the formidable challenge of safeguarding the nation's security while also working to bridge the divisions within society. The need for unity and resilience had never been greater as the United States navigated a complex landscape of threats and internal divisions. The world watched with concern as the nation grappled with these challenges. It was a sobering reminder of the complexities of governance and the vital importance of nurturing a sense of national unity and common purpose in the face of adversity. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 18. Again and again there arise new hostilities between diverse countries, which lead to political and economic differences and to evil and destructive wars and armed engagements. As a result, a fourth world war constantly has to be taken into consideration again and again. In this regard, the USA's criminal and felonious world domination affectations and world police affectations, as well as its political machinations, are especially in the foreground as the driving power. In the not-so-distant future, the world found itself caught in a relentless cycle of new hostilities between various nations. These hostilities stemmed from a complex interplay of political and economic differences, escalating into destructive wars and armed conflicts. It was a world where the shadow of a potential Fourth World War loomed ominously. The root causes of these hostilities were multifaceted, driven by territorial disputes, economic rivalries, and political ambitions. As nations vied for power and resources, tensions flared, and the consequences were far-reaching. Amid this global turmoil, the United States' actions played a central role in shaping the trajectory of these conflicts. The United States, driven by a perception of its world domination and a self-appointed role as the world's police force, 
often found itself at the forefront of political machinations. This position had implications that resonated far beyond its borders. The world watched with growing apprehension as the United States' assertive foreign policy and interventionist tendencies shaped international dynamics. The actions of the U.S. government influenced alliances, rivalries, and the fate of nations across the globe. The ongoing threat of a Fourth World War was a chilling reminder of the enduring complexities of international relations and the consequences of geopolitical decisions. The world yearned for diplomatic solutions and responsible leadership to prevent further escalation and to foster a more peaceful and stable global landscape. It was a future marked by uncertainty and the pressing need for effective diplomacy, multilateral cooperation, and a renewed commitment to global peace. The world hoped for a future where nations could coexist in harmony and find peaceful resolutions to their differences, thereby avoiding the catastrophic consequences of another world war. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 19. Worldwide Diverse countries get increasingly on the edge of a collapse in regard to public policy, while an intensification of the bad security situations internally, just as externally, through extreme terroristic and military, as well as dictatorial machinations, will climb. In the not-so-distant future, a growing number of nations found themselves teetering on the brink of collapse in terms of public policy and governance. The challenges that nations faced were multifaceted, manifesting both internally and externally, and the security situations, already fragile, were deteriorating rapidly. Internally, these nations grappled with an intensifying climate of insecurity. Extreme terrorism, with its devastating consequences, was on the rise, as radical groups and lone actors posed significant threats to public safety. Acts of terror had become a daily concern, instilling fear and uncertainty in the hearts of citizens. Military conflicts and insurgencies were also on the upswing, with power struggles and armed uprisings further destabilizing already fragile regions. These conflicts often resulted in massive displacement of populations, exacerbating the humanitarian crises that nations were grappling with. Externally, the dynamics were equally complex. Diplomatic tensions and international rivalries were escalating, leading to a rise in political machinations and covert operations. Nations pursued their interests at the expense of global stability, often at the risk of provoking conflict. In this future, the international community faced an urgent challenge. Nations needed to work collectively to address the root causes of instability and to prevent the collapse of public policy in the affected countries. The world watched with concern as the precarious balance of global security hung in the balance. And the need for responsible diplomacy, humanitarian intervention, and conflict resolution became increasingly apparent. It was a future that underscored the importance of fostering global cooperation and diplomacy to navigate the complexities of a world on the brink of collapse. The fate of nations and the well-being of their citizens depended on the ability of the international community to find solutions to the pressing challenges of the time. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 20. In spite of other efforts of the government, Russia will be the target of terrorists, whereby especially Islamic attacks from the autonomous regions Dagestan and Chechnya will threaten. In the near future, despite the best efforts of the Russian government to maintain security and stability, the nation faced a persistent and challenging threat from terrorism. Russia, a vast and diverse country, found itself as a target for terrorist activities, 
with particular concern coming from the autonomous regions of Dagestan and Chechnya. These regions had long been known for their historical and ongoing tensions, often characterized by ethnic and religious complexities. From within these areas, terrorist groups with various affiliations, including Islamic extremist organizations, posed a significant security risk. Attacks from these regions, which had deep-rooted grievances and had experienced historical conflicts, were aimed at disrupting Russia's peace and stability. The threat was not only directed at specific regions, but had the potential to impact the entire nation. The Russian government, in coordination with security forces and intelligence agencies, worked diligently to prevent these attacks and protect the nation's citizens. Their efforts encompassed both proactive security measures and outreach to address the root causes of radicalization. The world watched with a sense of urgency as Russia navigated this challenging landscape. The government's ability to maintain security and address the concerns of the autonomous regions would be instrumental in fostering peace and stability in the nation. It was a future that served as a reminder of the global challenge of countering extremism and terrorism, and the need for diplomacy and proactive measures to prevent the radicalization of individuals and the emergence of security threats. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 21. For the sake of their greed for might, and in order to maintain it, the nuclear weapon states will carry out wars with atomic weapons as well as with other weapons of mass destruction, and thereby spread affliction, death, misery, destruction, and elimination over the entire Earth. In the disconcerting future, the nuclear weapon states were driven by their insatiable thirst for power and their determination to maintain it at any cost. As a result, these nations had resorted to conducting wars not only with atomic weapons, but also with other forms of mass destruction. The consequences were nothing short of catastrophic. Across the globe, affliction, death, misery, and destruction reigned supreme. The very essence of humanity and the natural world was under siege as the ravages of these weapons swept across the earth. Nations found themselves caught in a relentless cycle of destruction, with the terrifying capabilities of these weapons bringing devastation on an unprecedented scale. The world watched with horror as entire regions were reduced to wastelands, with profound and long-lasting consequences for both the environment and the well-being of the global population. In this future, the pressing need for international cooperation, disarmament, and diplomacy had never been more apparent. The imperative of preventing the further use of these weapons and finding peaceful solutions to global conflicts was the defining challenge of the time. It was a stark reminder of the ever-present specter of nuclear warfare and the devastating potential of mass destruction. The world hoped for a future where nations would turn away from the path of devastation and instead work collaboratively to ensure the safety and well-being of all humanity. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 22. Natural resources will become such rare materials that the countries will trigger and wage wars about them which get very badly out of control whereby quite especially certain great mighty nuclear weapon states will apply their deadly weapons without scruples. In the not-so-distant future, the world faced an alarming and perilous predicament. Natural resources had become so scarce and coveted that nations were willing to initiate and engage in wars to secure them. These resource-driven conflicts spiraled out of control, leading to devastating consequences. Countries were locked in fierce competition over dwindling reserves of essential materials, including freshwater, arable land, rare minerals, and energy resources. 
The stakes were high, as access to these resources was critical for a nation's economic stability and the well-being of its citizens. Certain great and powerful nuclear-armed states, driven by their thirst for control and dominance, were prepared to employ their deadly weapons without hesitation. The threat of nuclear warfare loomed large, as these states were determined to secure their access to these precious resources at any cost. The world watched in horror as the conflicts escalated beyond containment. Entire regions were thrust into chaos and turmoil, and the consequences reverberated globally. The use of nuclear weapons, once thought to be an unthinkable last resort, became a grim reality. This future was a stark reminder of the profound challenges of resource scarcity and the potential for conflict in a world struggling to meet its needs. It underscored the urgent need for international cooperation. Sustainable resource management and diplomatic solutions to address these critical issues and avoid the cataclysmic outcomes of resource-driven conflicts. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 23. The prosperity of the entire humanity will be threatened, already in the current time and more than ever in the future, through authoritarian tendencies of the elites of the governments. Politicians, populists and the capitalists, whereby inevitably also societal signs of decay, will go hand in hand with it. In the unfolding future, the prosperity of the entire global population was under a growing and ominous threat. This peril was driven by a convergence of authoritarian tendencies exhibited by the elites within governments, political leaders, populists, and powerful capitalists. As a result, society was experiencing a concerning and multifaceted deterioration. The world had witnessed the rise of leaders who exercised an iron grip on their nations, often at the expense of democratic principles and the well-being of their citizens. Authoritarian tendencies were on the ascent, and these leaders wielded increasing power and control over their societies. The consequences of this authoritarian shift were profound. The elites, driven by their hunger for power and influence, undermined democratic institutions, eroded civil liberties, and suppressed dissent. As a result, the voices of the people were stifled, and societal decay began to set in. Signs of societal decay included a weakening of social cohesion, the erosion of individual rights, and growing economic inequality. The prosperity that many had enjoyed in the past was increasingly imperiled, leading to uncertainty and discontent among the population. In this future, the imperative of safeguarding democracy, defending individual rights, and promoting equitable economic systems became more urgent than ever. The world watched as the struggle between authoritarianism and democratic values played out on the global stage. The future served as a stark reminder of the critical importance of defending the principles of democracy, human rights, and the well-being of all individuals. The world hoped for a future where the oppressive tendencies of elites were overcome and societies could thrive in a climate of freedom, fairness, and prosperity. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 24. The Earth humankind will bring about the most unscrupulous and life-disdaining and human-disdaining systems of rule, as have never before appeared on the Earth, whereby the executors of the rule and regency, those greedy for possessions and the mighty capitalists, will steer the ship of humanity from one catastrophe to another. In the not-so-distant future, Humanity was confronted with an unsettling and unprecedented reality. The Earth's inhabitants had borne witness to the emergence of the most unscrupulous and life-disdaining systems of rule that the world had ever seen. 
These systems were characterized by an extreme disregard for human life and the values that had long underpinned society. At the helm of these systems were ruthless and power-hungry leaders who placed their own interests and insatiable greed for possessions above all else. Their rule was marked by a relentless pursuit of wealth and control, often at the expense of the well-being and dignity of their fellow humans. The consequences of these heartless systems were devastating. Humanity found itself trapped in a never-ending cycle of catastrophes and crises, each more dire than the last. Economic meltdowns, environmental disasters, social upheavals, and political instability became a constant backdrop to daily life. The world watched with a sense of urgency and disbelief as the ship of humanity was steered from one calamity to another. The promise of a better future and the principles of compassion and cooperation had been overshadowed by the ruthless ambitions of those in power. This future served as a stark reminder of the importance of responsible leadership, ethics, and a shared commitment to the well-being of all individuals. It underscored the need for a collective effort to overcome the challenges posed by the most unscrupulous systems of rule. In order to create a world where humanity could flourish in a climate of peace, justice, and compassion. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 25. The terrorism, with both a religious sectarian, political form, as well as human hostile and state hostile form, will increasingly take the upper hand worldwide, and the deadly and destructive terrorist attacks of all kinds will demand more human lives all over the world and will call forth destructions with a gay vault nature. The entire worldwide terrorism will strike again and again and will become a nightmare for the Earth humanity. In a future that had been marred by escalating terrorism, the world found itself in the grip of a relentless and deadly threat. Terrorism, in its various forms, had taken a stranglehold on global affairs, and the consequences were devastating. This terrorism was multifaceted, encompassing religious sectarian, political, and human hostile elements. It manifested in acts of violence that targeted innocent civilians, state institutions, and even international organizations. The result was a continuous series of deadly and destructive attacks that claimed countless lives and left a trail of devastation in their wake. Nations across the globe had become battlegrounds where the constant threat of terrorism loomed large. Security measures were heightened, freedoms were curtailed, and societies lived in a state of fear and apprehension. The world had been irrevocably changed by this relentless wave of terror. Efforts to combat this scourge were relentless, with nations cooperating to share intelligence and coordinate counterterrorism operations. The fight against terrorism had become a global mission and it required not only military and security measures, but also diplomacy and dialogue to address the root causes and ideologies that fueled extremist movements. This future served as a stark reminder of the importance of global unity in the face of terrorism and the need for a concerted effort to address its underlying causes. The world longed for a future where peace and security could be restored and societies could live free from the specter of terrorism. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 26. The political risks increase worldwide and threaten to very badly get out of the control of the good human nature with regard to instability. All kinds of armed conflicts as well as wars and acts of terror where through also in this regard the terrorist danger which has got very badly out of the control of the good human nature will increase considerably and will drive the world to the edge of a collapse. In the not-so-distant future, the world faced a troubling and increasingly complex global landscape. 
Political risks were on the rise, threatening to spiral out of control and disrupt the equilibrium of society and international relations. These risks encompassed a wide spectrum of challenges, including instability, various forms of armed conflicts, and even full-scale wars and acts of terror. The world watched with growing apprehension as the fabric of global stability appeared to be unraveling. Nations found themselves locked in disputes, competing interests, and political rivalries that showed no signs of abating. Diplomatic efforts to mitigate these tensions often faltered, and the world's leaders struggled to navigate the complexities of international relations. One of the most pressing concerns was the escalating threat of terrorism, a danger that had grown considerably and had now far exceeded the control of good human nature. Radical groups and extremist individuals operated with increasing audacity, spreading chaos and fear on a global scale. The world had been driven to the edge of a precipice, teetering on the brink of collapse. This future underscored the critical importance of responsible leadership, conflict resolution, and global cooperation to address the pressing challenges of the time. The fate of nations and the well-being the future was a reminder of the profound responsibility of nations to work together in maintaining global peace, security, and stability. The world hoped for a future where diplomatic efforts and a commitment to shared humanity would prevail, ensuring a path away from the precipice and toward a more peaceful and secure world. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 27. Worldwide The incessantly growing overpopulation and all the maladministration systems of all kinds and in all areas will continue to drive the numbers of unemployed high and achieve forms which will call forth tremendous problems, as has never been the case with any earlier times of unemployment. In the unfolding future, the world grappled with an escalating and seemingly uncontainable issue, overpopulation and a staggering increase in unemployment. This crisis was driven by both the relentless growth of the global population and a proliferation of mismanagement systems across various sectors. The effects of this crisis were profound and far-reaching. Unemployment had reached unprecedented levels, creating a formidable challenge that had never been witnessed in earlier times. Millions of people found themselves without work and opportunities, struggling to make ends meet and provide for their families. The consequences of this widespread unemployment were multifaceted. Economies strained under the weight of an enormous and idle workforce, leading to financial instability, reduced consumer spending, and growing social inequalities. The social fabric of nations was stretched to its limits, as individuals and families grappled with the emotional and financial toll of joblessness. Governments, institutions, and societies found themselves wrestling with the urgent need to find solutions to this monumental problem. The future was marked by innovative policies and initiatives aimed at addressing the crisis, from job creation programs to retraining and upskilling efforts. The world watched as the challenge of rampant unemployment unfolded, underscoring the need for global cooperation, forward thinking solutions, and responsible governance to navigate this new and complex landscape. The future held the potential for a paradigm shift in how societies approached employment, with the ultimate goal of ensuring that the well-being and dignity of all individuals were preserved. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 28. In the whole economy, wages for the employees will sink very low and call forth monstrous financial problems in all levels of the population of the workers' world whereby also the whole social services will suffer harm, break down, and all around also the rapidly increasing criminality will call forth tremendous problems.
In the foreseeable future, a profound transformation was taking place within the global economy, with far-reaching consequences for the workforce and society at large. Wages for employees had plummeted to alarmingly low levels, setting in motion a series of cascading financial problems that reverberated across all strata of the working population. This seismic shift in economic dynamics had dire implications. Individuals and families struggled to make ends meet, grappling with inadequate income to cover their basic needs. The cost of living had outpaced the meager wages, leaving many in precarious financial situations. The repercussions extended beyond individual households. Social services, which played a vital role in providing a safety net for vulnerable populations, were stretched to their limits and, in some cases, on the brink of collapse. These services were hamstrung by insufficient funding simultaneously, a surge in criminality swept through society. Economic desperation and social dislocation had driven some individuals toward illicit activities, while others sought to exploit the vulnerabilities of their fellow citizens. Crime rates soared, placing further strain on law enforcement agencies and the criminal justice system. Governments and institutions grappled with the urgent need to address this multifaceted crisis. New economic policies, labor reforms, and social welfare programs were implemented to combat the escalating issues of low wages, financial instability, and growing criminality. The world watched with concern as these transformative changes unfolded highlighting the need for a renewed commitment to social and economic justice. The future held the potential for a society where workers' rights were safeguarded, social services were robust, and the well-being of all individuals was a top priority. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 29. Through speculators, a global financial and economic crisis will be called forth such as has never before occurred, consequently, also the entire world of finance will get into great trouble and also much terribleness and great lack in regard to economic goods will come about. In the not-so-distant future, the global financial and economic landscape experienced a seismic upheaval, unlike any crisis that had come before. This unprecedented turmoil was triggered by a powerful force in the financial world, speculators. These individuals and entities, driven by their pursuit of profits and market manipulation, initiated a global financial and economic crisis that rippled across the world. The repercussions were profound and far-reaching, impacting economies, industries, and individuals on a global scale. The world of finance, which had been considered a pillar of stability and prosperity, found itself teetering on the edge of chaos. Markets fluctuated wildly, and institutions struggled to cope with the unpredictability and volatility. Financial systems, once considered robust, now faced significant challenges and vulnerabilities. The consequences of this crisis were deeply felt. Economic goods, which had been taken for granted, became scarce, leading to shortages and significant hardship. Individuals and families grappled with financial instability and uncertainty, as jobs were lost and investments vanished in the midst of the crisis. Governments and financial institutions scrambled to address the crisis implementing emergency measures and regulations to stabilize the markets and restore confidence. The global community watched with a mixture of concern and determination as efforts were made to navigate this uncharted territory. The future served as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of unbridled speculation and financial manipulation. It underscored the importance of responsible financial practices and regulatory safeguards to ensure the stability of the global economy.
The world hoped for a future where financial systems were resilient, transparent, and equitable, and where the well-being of individuals and the global economy were safeguarded against the devastating impact of speculative crises. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 30. Also in the USA, the population shall get dispossessed as a consequence of the worldwide financial crisis, which will lead to the incensed and partly heavily armed population being advanced on by military and police powers with evil gewalt. In a future that felt like a grim and unsettling alternate reality, the United States was grappling with the repercussions of a global financial crisis. The crisis had unfolded on an unprecedented scale, leading to widespread economic instability and leaving a significant portion of the population in a state of disarray and dispossession. As the financial crisis deepened, it sparked an outpouring of public anger and frustration. The American people, who had long prided themselves on their resilience and spirit of self-reliance, found themselves pushed to the brink of despair. Many had lost their homes, jobs, and savings, and the promise of the American dream had become a distant memory for countless individuals and families. In response to this societal upheaval, segments of the population became increasingly incensed and desperate. Frustration and economic hardship boiled over into public demonstrations and protests, some of which turned confrontational. Heavily armed groups emerged, seeking to address their grievances through radical means. In this tense environment, the government deployed military and police powers to maintain order, but the situation was fraught with danger. The use of force, at times excessive and brutal, further fueled the anger and resistance of those who felt dispossessed. The world watched with a sense of unease as the United States grappled with this precarious and highly charged situation. The nation, which had once been seen as a symbol of prosperity and freedom, was now facing a dire crisis that had exposed deep social and economic fault lines. This future was a stark reminder of the importance of addressing economic inequalities and safeguarding the well-being of all citizens. It underscored the need for responsible governance, economic stability, and social support systems to prevent the kind of societal upheaval that had taken hold in this sobering vision of the future. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 31. The planned ban on cash shall bring about the dispossession of the populations. While, however, the elite of the governors and of capitalism can, for their part, swim in joy and splendor. And the entire financial system of the entire world shall be toppled in order thereby to newly arrange all existing state debts of all countries, and indeed such that generally only the populations of the countries come to harm. Already in the USA and in the EU dictatorship, there exist secret plans to start a war from Germany against Russia, which shall be named as the reason for the entire arising worldwide crisis. And that thereby the blame for this war is to then be shoved onto Russia, naturally completely unrightly, if it actually comes about, is clear right from the start. And if this war actually occurs, then from that martial law is deduced which suppresses the incensed population, which will be completely dispossessed, through strong and ruthless military and police powers. In a future that felt like a dystopian nightmare, a series of unsettling and manipulative actions by those in power had thrown the world into turmoil. The orchestrated plan to ban cash, ostensibly for reasons of modernization and convenience, concealed a more sinister agenda the dispossession of populations and the consolidation of power among the elite of the governors and capitalists. As cash was gradually phased out, the populations found themselves at the mercy of a digital and easily controlled financial system. Those in power 
including governments and the financial elite, reveled in their newfound wealth and control, while ordinary citizens struggled to adapt to a world in which their financial privacy and autonomy had been eroded. The global financial system, which had once been seen as a cornerstone of stability and prosperity, was now deliberately toppled. The existing state debts of countries were restructured, but in a way that placed the burden squarely on the shoulders of the general population. Ordinary citizens bore the brunt of these manipulative actions, while the powerful and wealthy remained unscathed. Secret plans had emerged in certain regions, including the USA and the EU dictatorship, to instigate a war, using Germany as a pawn against Russia. The war would be presented as the reason for a worldwide crisis, shifting blame onto Russia. The war, if it came to pass, would be unjustly pinned on Russia, setting the stage for a global conflict. If this war materialized, martial law would be declared a measure intended to suppress the dispossessed and incensed population through the ruthless application of military and police powers. The world watched in disbelief and growing fear as the unfolding events raised questions about the abuse of power, manipulation, and the erosion of individual rights and freedoms. This future was a stark reminder of the need for transparency, accountability, and safeguarding the rights and well-being of the global population. It highlighted the importance of resisting manipulative agendas and maintaining a commitment to justice, fairness, and the preservation of individual freedoms. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 32. Already today countries exist which in truth only correspond to nominal states and which are effectively no longer independent states. Rather only exist in name as such and no longer have any kind of their own state authority. Basically that solely concerns open areas which teem with criminal bands and which are controlled by guerrilla fighters and warlords. Also, Europe corresponds to an area which is besmirched by criminality and felony, but which is additionally controlled by the EU dictatorship, which is a highly dangerous dictatorship which contributes very much to the instability of the international politics and also is a starting point and, at the same time, a will-less tool in the hands of the international terrorism and is the point from which threats of military gay vault will go out in the future. But from the EU dictatorship also, criminal and felonious machinations through criminals and felons start out, and will come out in greater measure in the future, such as trade in drugs, human beings and weapons, whereby, as time goes on, less and less correct conditions can be brought about. In this not-so-distant future, a troubling trend had emerged, where some countries had effectively lost their independence and the ability to govern themselves as autonomous states. These nations had become mere nominal entities, existing in name only, with little or no control over their territories. The regions most affected by this transformation were often lawless areas, overrun by criminal bands, and controlled by guerrilla fighters and warlords. In these territories, the rule of law had disintegrated, leaving the population vulnerable to criminal activity and violence. Europe, once seen as a bastion of stability and prosperity, had also faced its own challenges. The continent had been beset by rising criminality and felony, further eroding the sense of security and well-being of its citizens. In addition to these internal issues, Europe was grappling with the presence of the EU dictatorship. The EU dictatorship had evolved into a highly influential and dangerous authority that contributed to the instability of international politics. It had become a hub for international terrorism, and its policies often served as a catalyst for threats of military violence in the future. 
Moreover, the EU dictatorship had also become a breeding ground for criminal activities, with its criminals engaging in illicit trades such as drugs, human trafficking, and weapon smuggling. As time went on, the situation continued to deteriorate, making it increasingly challenging to establish and maintain proper governance and law enforcement. This future underscored the importance of preserving national sovereignty and ensuring that institutions, such as the EU, acted responsibly and in the best interests of their citizens. It served as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power, instability, and the erosion of the rule of law. The world watched with concern, hoping for a future where nations and regions could regain control over their destinies and restore security and stability. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 33. There will be efforts made to dispossess Greece's population, as will also be attempted with other countries when the opportunity arises. In a future where global dynamics were shifting dramatically, Greece found itself on the precipice of a looming crisis. There were concerted efforts to dispossess the Greek population, a fate that was also being attempted in other vulnerable nations when opportunities arose. The roots of this crisis were complex and multifaceted. Economic challenges had left Greece vulnerable, and external actors sought to exploit this vulnerability for their gain. These efforts to dispossess the population encompassed various elements, including financial pressures, manipulation, and resource exploitation. The Greek population faced growing hardships, with livelihoods and standards of living deteriorating rapidly. Many found themselves struggling to make ends meet, facing financial uncertainty and insecurity. The crisis took a toll on the social fabric of the nation, as communities grappled with the impact of dispossession. However, the world had not turned a blind eye to the plight of Greece and other nations facing similar challenges. International organizations, concerned governments, and advocacy groups rallied to support these countries and their populations. Diplomatic efforts were underway to address the root causes of the crisis and to provide assistance to those in need. The future remained uncertain, but it was also a stark reminder of the importance of solidarity, cooperation, and the protection of national sovereignty. The world hoped for a future where nations like Greece could regain their footing, preserve their dignity, and rebuild their economies with the support and cooperation of the global community. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 34. The pension offices will no longer be able to dispense pension payments because their financial means come to an end, and indeed, on one hand, as a consequence of the higher age of the pensioners, on the other hand, because their number increases due to the increasing mass of the overpopulation and altogether also the costs of living climb and thereby also the pension requirements, the raising of which and even the payment of which will however be more and more in question. In the foreseeable future, a concerning crisis loomed on the horizon, affecting the stability of pension systems worldwide. The once reliable pension offices found themselves unable to dispense payments to retirees, signaling an impending financial catastrophe. This pension crisis had multiple underlying causes. Firstly, the average age of pensioners had risen, as people were living longer, healthier lives. This meant that the pension funds needed to sustain retirees for an extended period placing significant pressure on the available financial resources. Secondly, the global population continued to grow, adding to the ranks of pensioners. The increasing mass of overpopulation meant that more people were claiming their pensions, depleting available funds even faster. Simultaneously, the costs of living were on the rise, 
driving up the requirements for pension payments. This further strained the already fragile pension systems, making it increasingly challenging to meet the financial demands of retirees. As a result, questions arose about the feasibility of raising pension requirements and, in some cases, even making payments at all. Many retirees faced the stark reality of diminished or delayed pension benefits, leading to financial insecurity and hardship during their golden years. Governments and institutions worldwide grappled with the urgent need to address this crisis. Reforms, adjustments, and innovative solutions were explored to stabilize pension systems and ensure the financial security of retirees. The future was a stark reminder of the importance of responsible financial planning, social support systems, and a commitment to preserving the well-being and dignity of the elderly population. Society hoped for a future where pensioners could enjoy their retirement years without the looming threat of financial insecurity. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 35. Many countries will get into pecuniary trouble due to nonsensical financial expenditure and financially overcommitting. Where through the entire state structure and banks, as well as the economy, will collapse as a consequence of inevitable bankruptcy. In the not so distant future, a troubling trend had emerged in many countries nonsensical financial expenditure and reckless financial overcommitment. Governments had embarked on ambitious spending programs, often driven by political considerations, without sufficient regard for fiscal responsibility. As these countries recklessly accumulated debt, their state structures, banks, and economies teetered on the edge of financial disaster. The inevitable consequence of this imprudent behavior was bankruptcy a crisis that threatened to bring down the entire financial and economic infrastructure of these nations. The repercussions of these financial missteps were felt across society. Individuals and businesses faced growing uncertainty as the economy faltered and access to credit dried up. Jobs were lost and investments evaporated, leading to widespread financial hardship. Governments were confronted with the harsh reality of financial collapse. Public services and social safety nets were strained to their limits, leaving citizens without the support they had come to rely on. The crisis also eroded trust in financial institutions and government bodies, further deepening the sense of turmoil and instability. In response to this dire situation, nations and international organizations rallied to provide assistance and debt relief in an effort to stabilize the struggling countries. The world watched with concern and hope as efforts were made to rebuild shattered economies and restore financial stability. This future served as a stark reminder of the importance of responsible financial governance, the need for transparency, and the perils of unchecked financial mismanagement. It underscored the imperative of preserving the stability of economies to ensure the well-being and prosperity of citizens. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 36. Worldwide, all social systems will collapse, as a result of which more and more human beings fall into the deepest poverty, can no longer enjoy health care, and will also die of hunger and misery because they can no longer finance their living costs and therefore also their own food and health. In a future that was both bleak and disheartening, a global crisis of unprecedented proportions had taken hold. Worldwide, social systems were crumbling, setting in motion a chain of events that pushed a growing number of people into the depths of poverty. The collapse of social systems had dire consequences. Health care, once a basic human right, became a luxury that only a fortunate few could afford. 
A growing segment of the population found themselves without access to essential medical services, facing illness and suffering without relief. Medical facilities were strained to their limits, struggling to provide care to those in need. For many, the most fundamental human necessity, food, became a scarce and elusive commodity. Hunger and malnutrition spread, leading to a sharp rise in mortality rates. People, unable to finance their living costs, found themselves in a relentless cycle of misery and despair. The world watched in horror as lives were lost not to exotic diseases or dramatic catastrophes, but to the basic and preventable scourges of hunger and poverty. International organizations and concerned governments worked tirelessly to address this catastrophic crisis, providing relief and support to those in need. Humanitarian aid efforts were launched on a global scale, and resources were mobilized to combat the crisis. This future was a sobering reminder of the importance of preserving social safety nets, healthcare systems, and global solidarity. It served as a call to action for the world to address the root causes of such widespread suffering and to ensure that all people could live with dignity, free from the shackles of poverty and the specter of hunger. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 37. In the future, independent and sovereign countries will be appraised as the greatest threats and enemies for U.S. America whereby, as it has been for as long as can be remembered, Russia, from the confused U.S. viewpoint, will be increasingly proclaimed the greatest danger for the American security. In a future that was marred by shifting international relations and complex geopolitical dynamics, the United States found itself in a state of heightened apprehension. Independent and sovereign countries had come to be viewed as the greatest threats and enemies to U.S. interests and security. The rationale behind this perspective was multifaceted. The United States, driven by a combination of historical precedent and evolving international dynamics, perceived certain independent nations as challenges to its strategic objectives and interests. These countries were often seen as rivals or competitors in various aspects, including trade, diplomacy, and regional influence. From the American viewpoint, Russia had long been a source of concern. The United States increasingly viewed Russia as the most significant threat to its national security. The reasons for this perception were multifaceted involving a complex web of historical grievances, ideological differences, and power struggles. Tensions between the United States and these countries were palpable, and diplomatic efforts to ease the strain had become increasingly strained. The world watched with a mix of concern and hope, hoping that diplomatic channels could be maintained to prevent a descent into open conflict. This future was a reminder of the importance of diplomacy, dialogue, and cooperation in addressing global challenges. The world hoped for a future where international relations could be characterized by peaceful coexistence and collaboration, rather than by perceptions of threat and enmity. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 38. Increasingly, Immense quantities of the most modern heavy weapons will be brought to Europe by the USA and be stationed in Germany and in the countries bordering Russia. But Russia does not simply accept this and arms itself with its own atomic arsenal and also all other weapons, as well as the Russian army, that is, the entirety of the Russian military. In the not-so-distant future, Europe found itself at the center of an escalating arms race a sobering reminder of the complex geopolitics of the time. The United States had undertaken the deployment of vast quantities of cutting-edge heavy weapons to Europe, particularly in Germany and countries bordering Russia. 
This move was perceived by some as an attempt to bolster regional security and safeguard the interests of NATO allies in Eastern Europe. However, Russia regarded this significant military buildup with deep concern. It was seen as a provocative move that heightened tensions in the region and prompted a significant response. Russia, determined not to be outmatched, took a series of measures to secure its own interests. The Russian government embarked on a comprehensive military modernization program, rapidly developing its atomic arsenal and bolstering its conventional forces. The Russian military, once again a formidable presence, received extensive upgrades and advanced weaponry. The situation in Europe was fraught with apprehension, as both sides engaged in a dangerous and costly arms race. The world watched with growing this future was a stark reminder of the importance of dialogue, diplomacy, and arms control in the realm of international relations. It served as a call to action for nations to prioritize peaceful coexistence and collaborative efforts to address regional security concerns. The world yearned for a future where cooperation and diplomacy could prevail over the ominous specter of a renewed arms race. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 39. Already today there are not only two world mights, the USA and Russia, because there are also diverse regional great mights which are partly armed with nuclear weapons and which have international affectations, whereby the EU dictatorship stands ahead of all of them, then also Brazil, India, Japan, Nigeria and South Africa. However, with that, the insecurity grows for all countries and the entire world, because all arm themselves more and more, and indeed not simply to protect themselves from attacks, rather also in order to possibly attack neighboring states. In the not-so-distant future, the world's geopolitical landscape had undergone a dramatic transformation. It was no longer defined by just two superpowers, the United States and Russia. Instead, a new order had emerged, characterized by the presence of various regional great powers, many of which possessed nuclear capabilities and wielded significant international influence. At the forefront of this shifting global dynamic stood the EU dictatorship, an entity that had evolved into a major force on the international stage. It was followed closely by Brazil, India, Japan, Nigeria, and South Africa, each of which had risen to prominence in their respective regions. The proliferation of powerful regional actors had created a sense of heightened uncertainty and insecurity. Countries around the world had been arming themselves not only for defense, but also with a view to safeguard their interests and potentially exert influence over neighboring states. This evolution of the global balance of power emphasized the need for nations to navigate an increasingly complex and interconnected world. Diplomacy, cooperation, and conflict resolution became paramount in this era, as the potential for tensions and confrontations between powerful states loomed large. The international community recognized that maintaining peace and stability in this new multipolar world required deft diplomacy and a commitment to peaceful coexistence. The world hoped for a future where nations could collaborate rather than confront, in pursuit of common goals and shared security. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 40. Worldwide, the populations of many countries will become ever more unsatisfied due to the arising state miseries, and will oppose and protest to the point of having insurgencies from which the danger of civil wars will arise. In a future that was marked by growing dissatisfaction and unrest, populations in many countries found themselves grappling with the consequences of state mismanagement. Frustrations had reached a tipping point, 
leading to widespread opposition and protests that verged on insurgency, with the ominous shadow of civil war looming on the horizon. The root causes of these grievances were diverse and complex, ranging from economic hardships to political corruption, human rights violations, and social inequalities. Citizens, disheartened by the state of their nations, took to the streets, expressing their discontent through organized demonstrations and acts of civil disobedience. As the protests escalated, some regions found themselves on the brink of civil conflict. The discord had strained the social fabric of these countries, with various factions and groups advocating for their interests, sometimes at the expense of unity and stability. In response to these challenges, governments and international organizations worked tirelessly to address the underlying issues fueling the discontent. Diplomatic efforts aimed to bridge divides, promote dialogue, and restore order, all in a bid to prevent the descent into open civil war. The world watched with a mix of concern and hope, yearning for a future where nations could overcome their internal struggles, achieve peace, and find common ground. This future served as a stark reminder of the importance of responsive governance, social justice, and the protection of human rights to safeguard the stability and unity of nations. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 41. The lives of the governors and financial leaders who rule in a lax and wrong as well as elite, might greedy, selfish and imperious form over the populations will no longer be secure and they will be forced to defend their lives as well as their goods and possessions, which will only be possible, if it is at all, when they have themselves protected by bodyguards or even their own mercenary force. In a future where the chasm between the powerful elites and the rest of the population had grown increasingly vast, the lives of governors and financial leaders became precarious. They ruled with a sense of entitlement, self-interest, and arrogance, which had left them vulnerable to the discontent and anger of the masses they governed. As the resentment against these elites boiled over, the security of the ruling class was no longer assured. They found themselves living in constant fear for their lives and the preservation of their wealth. Many had no choice but to hire personal bodyguards, while some even resorted to maintaining their private mercenary forces. The world had become a place where those in power lived in fortresses, isolated from the rest of society, in a desperate attempt to protect their lives and possessions. The gap between the haves and have-nots had become an insurmountable abyss, leading to a society where the privileged few lived in fear of the very population they were meant to serve. This future was a stark reminder of the perils of unchecked greed, inequality, and the consequences of leadership that failed to address the needs and concerns of the people. It was a world where the ruling elite were not only disconnected from the rest of society, but were compelled to take extraordinary measures to safeguard their own survival. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 42. Worldwide The elites of the governors and of the moneyed aristocracy, together with corrupt politicians, will set up totalitarian and dictatorial surveillance states and thereby preserve their dominance. In a future where the elites of governors and the moneyed aristocracy, aided by corrupt politicians, had consolidated their power, a chilling reality had taken hold. These ruling classes had established totalitarian and dictatorial surveillance states, with the primary objective of preserving their dominance and control over the population. The once-cherished principles of freedom, privacy, and individual rights had eroded under the weight of the surveillance apparatus. The very notion of personal liberty was replaced by an omnipresent system that monitored every aspect of people's lives. 
from their online activities and communications to their physical movements and even their thoughts. This surveillance state was characterized by an array of intrusive technologies, from pervasive security cameras to advanced artificial intelligence systems that tracked and analyzed citizen behavior. A culture of fear and self-censorship had permeated society, as individuals became increasingly hesitant to express dissent or challenge the ruling elite. Any opposition or deviation from the prescribed norm was met with swift and severe repercussions. Dissidents faced harassment, imprisonment, and even forced disappearances. The ruling class maintained its power through a combination of fear, manipulation, and the suppression of any potential threats. This future underscored the fragile nature of democracy and the necessity of protecting individual freedoms and civil liberties. It served as a stark reminder of the importance of vigilance in the face of encroachments on personal privacy and the need to safeguard the fundamental principles of a free and just society. Can you give me a story of how this could be our future? 43. The world of finance will increasingly promote capitalism, whereby it will all get very badly out of control in nationalistic form, that is to say, fascistically, in order to prevent and choke off other systems which may appear and arise against capitalism. In a future where the world of finance wielded unprecedented power, capitalism had become the driving force behind global economics. However, this form of capitalism had taken on a dangerous and unchecked nature. It was marked by a growing wave of nationalism and authoritarianism which bore the hallmarks of fascism. This aggressive and domineering version of capitalism was not content with mere economic success, it sought to suppress and eliminate any alternative systems or ideologies that challenged its supremacy. It did so through a web of financial manipulation, political coercion, and media control. The global financial elite, in collaboration with authoritarian governments, worked tirelessly to undermine and stifle competing economic systems. Dissent was crushed, and alternative ideologies were systematically eradicated. The media, once a beacon of independent journalism, had become a propaganda tool for the ruling class, perpetuating their agenda and stifling any form of dissent. The world watched in dismay as these developments threatened the very foundations of democracy, freedom, and the principles of fair competition. It was a future where the principles of capitalism had been perverted to serve the interests of the powerful, rather than the well-being of the population. This future served as a stark reminder of the importance of preserving economic diversity, protecting individual freedoms, and maintaining a robust system of checks and balances to ensure that the forces of capitalism did not become a tool of oppression and exploitation. It was a call to action for the world to safeguard the values that underpin just and equitable economic systems.